Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the HBO Max series, We Own This City. We are joined today by director and executive producer, Ronaldo Marcus Green, as well as actor, John Bernthal. And, and Ronaldo, I wanted to start by talking a little bit about your entry point into this story, because you know you, you read the scripts prior to reading the book. And I was interested in how then when you read the book, it was a, it was a valuable research tool in terms of filling in a lot of the spaces between, filling in a lot of the gaps, particularly because the book obviously has a lot more procedural detail and the scripts are much more led by character. And so how did that help you in terms of thinking about the way that you wanted to build out the world and the way that you wanted to tell this story visually on screen? Yeah, well, look, when I, when I, when I first got the project, John, John was attached, uh, you know, as, as Sergeant Wayne Jenkins. And so when I read the scripts, I, I read it with, with John in mind to play the part. And, and we have recently worked together on, on King Richard. And I thought, you know, I thought the role was tailor-made for him. You know, I thought he could really deliver a nuanced, complex, um, rich character, uh, flawed, but but also someone that, uh, you know, um, someone that is relatable, you know? Um, so many of us know Wayne Jenkins, you know? <laughs> so many guys like him. Um, and, and I thought John could really play that part. And, and so when I read the scripts, it, it was, it was, you know, the opening monologue of, of episode one is so rich and, and so powerful. And um, I was hooked. I was hooked, in, you know, immediately uh, into the world, knowing that John, I thought, could really blow this one out the water. So, um, of course, I ripped through all six. And, and, and it was tough because I didn't know where the source material was. And then, of course, when, once I, I got the opportunity to read Justin's book. I thought they did a pretty amazing job adapting adapting it. It's pretty dense. Um, you know, J Justin's great, but it's very journalistic, and, um, and and I think they they you know created some characters. Obviously, Wumi Masaka's character is completely fictional uh, to sort of handle some of you know to to handle some of the devices. Obviously, uh, it's nonlinear. Um, how they created. Uh, you know, a, a structure to make it entertaining um, and, and a new way to sort of like uh, break it down. So I, I thought they did a really, really good job. Um, you know, it's like nobody wants to necessarily look at a manual, but you have to you have to know where it's coming from to to to, to be able to see, OK, like this is what they cut out and, and this is why they cut out. And it was just really helpful to kind of go through. Uh, Justin's detail. And I think that the, the level of specificity that David and George uh, work with, I think is so critical to, to their filmmaking. This is what they've been doing for years since the corner. Um, and, and you can see that. Um, I, and I, I believe the story is, in, and correct me if I'm wrong, that David uh, was the one that encouraged Justin to actually write a book um, in, the in the first place. And so I think there was a, a history going back to him wanting uh, Justin to cover this material. It, it then turned into a book. And so I think he was living with this material for, for a really long time. So to have showrunners that had that level of expertise, that level of knowledge uh, to pull from was, was absolutely uh, critical to this particular type of story, but, but, oh, but also in, in, into, into the filmmaking. And so to have six episodes that were so um, carefully articulated and crafted, uh, gave me a, a really, a, you know, a, a solid foundation to build sort of a visual language, obviously with my team, Yaron Orbach, our, our DP, and our production designer, Valeria uh, Di Felice, uh, to really create, uh, hopefully, what, what you see is a, a really cinematic and, and visual uh, storytelling here. Absolutely. It's, it's incredibly visual. And, and John, I was interested in some of the conversations that you had with Wayne Jenkins, because um, it also sounds like you had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people that knew him even before you connected and sat down with him or had any phone calls, um, you know, and it, and from those conversations, um, you know, I, I've heard you talk about how one of the first things was him being like, you must think I'm such a monster. You must think I'm so evil and wanting to kind of talk you around that. But you had already kind of found that gray space in between through the, the conversations you'd had with other people who knew him about who was he as a father, who was he in these other worlds in these other ways. Um, and so how did that help you in going into conversations with Wayne and kind of already entering in the gray space? And then what were the types of questions and things that you wanted to learn from him to portray him on screen? Screen. I, I think if you're going to try to tackle, uh, if you're if you're going to try to explore uh, material like this and issues like this that are so unbelievably polarizing, uh, I, I, I think you have to be ready, willing, and able to uh, 
uh, dig into the wound and dive into the nuance and, 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 and to explore the gray. So, 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 you know, I appreciate that you used, you know, that term. I, I think there's an old acting exercise uh, that says, you know, write down everything anyone says about your character. And, and, and for me, I, I, I gained so much, I, I think, about from what folks told me about Wayne, folks that served on the gun trace task force with him, uh, folks that he grew up with, guys that he coached football with, folks from his family, folks from Middle River where he grew up. Um, Donnie Stepp, who he, he sold drugs with, uh, you know, outside of work or connected with work, however you want to put it. Um, you know, when I talked to Wayne personally, you know, on, on the same 15 minute phone call, he would declare his innocence and then sort of explain or, 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 or try to um, justify kind of his guilt. You know, it was always going back and forth. And there was something... To, you know, I, I always felt Wayne was was playing me in, in, in some way was, uh, you know, he, he there's something that he wanted. Uh, he was always kind of moving forward, looking for an angle. Um, he's a fascinating uh, a, a person, um, but but I think you're very right. I, it was really important to David off the jump that that, you know, we didn't make Wayne a monster. And I, I, I knew that, um, you know, to really sort of um, identify with the fact that uh, you know, he was a committed dad and you can be both a committed dad and, and also be somebody who does, you know, vile and heinous, uh, uh, corrupt deeds on, on the street. And, and a lot of times those things are sort of set up against each other and creates, you, you know, serious inner conflict. So that was something that I felt like I could latch on to. I love that. And, and Ronaldo, that sounds like in terms of the overall filmmaking and, and way that you wanted to tell this story as well, that that's kind of the space that you entered in at. You know, I know that you have a lot of friends that you grew up with who are in, in the police force in New York, um, you know, and have this great respect for people who, who do the job and do the job well and, and take a lot of care with it. But also, you know, that rightful disdain for people who are utilizing things in the wrong way and a real understanding of the systemic issues within the system that are continuously failing people. Um, and so when you were focusing not just on the character of Wayne, but the way that you wanted to frame all of these characters throughout for us, how did that influence the space that you wanted us to enter in the story and, and carry over it to the narrative? Yeah, look, I mean, the GTTF members in particular don't have a tremendous amount of redeeming qualities. And so we're, we're, we're trying to find, you know, again, I, this is my own personal belief, but I don't believe that there's anyone that signs up to become a police officer to do the things that the GTTF ended up doing. I, I do think that, that the majority, if not all people that sign up to put the uniform on, sign up with the best intentions. And I do think that the system uh, being as flawed as it is, um, you know, has a profound effect on how, uh, how you operate wearing that uniform. Um, and you, you know, uh, police officers can become complicit in some of the actions that you that you see depicted in the show. Um, you look, when you work with brilliant actors like John and, and, and Jamie Hector and Josh Charles, you, you, you what you get are, 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 are folks that are doing that research, right? They are asking every single person that has met them what they were like they're digging into their you know as as you know into their home life or, or anything that's public information or, or trying to meet people that met them and trying to find or latch on to that thing that drove them to become police officers or, or or made them human beings really and and not monsters what what were the things that made them human whether that was coaching their kids football game or or you know, uh, being a devout husband, or, or what, what were those things for, for those particular characters? Obviously, we have six episodes, we got to get a lot in, but even if that's in the subconscious of, of, the, uh, of, of us as we're, as we're performing the dialogue or going through these scenes, you know, it, it makes the characters more, uh, more complex and more nuanced. And so we're, we're, we're constantly trying to look for those, those common denominators, I guess, if you will, you know, what, what makes us all human, 
Um, you know, and, and I think there's a few moments that, that are really depicted very, very well. You know, th- at the end of episode three, where, where John is sitting with, with, um, with uh, Jamie Hector in the car and he's, he's telling him, look, I put on this uniform every day and I put my life on the line. I, I, I'm, I think he's very sincere. I think he believes that, you know, he's risking his life every day for the job and is not getting enough in return. And, and, and whether, you know, he should be doing the things that he's doing to justify that in that moment, I think we can understand, we can, we can, we can see where he's coming from, whether we agree or disagree, we can, we can understand that the motivation there. Um, and, and I think that's, that, that's exactly it. Look, it's in the writing, it's in the performance, and, and hopefully it's in the, the view of how we depict the, these particular characters you know i think if 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 love is in your heart it shows in how you frame something i, I know it's like it's hard to describe necessarily it's kind of how you how i see the world and 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 how you you know how how we uh how we portray it you know sometimes i think it's it's if you only see the world one way it will it will show that way too so um you know it's 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 more of a feeling than anything for sure Right. And, and in that way that we really get to understand motivations, and choices, I love the approach of the story in that we get to see him when he first joins the police force, you know, what are the ideas of what he thinks he, the job is going to be versus where he ends up at the end of the episodes. And even just that gradual charting of like, this is the first time he makes a decision like this, and it's a smaller one. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as he gets away with more and the people around him kind of become part of it as well. Um, and so for the two of you, how did you chart that? that journey episode by episode, especially with it being nonlinear storytelling of just finding the incremental choices that gradually lead to the larger space that we end up in. John, you wanna go? I mean, look, I mean, what I'll say is, is, is absolutely, you know, one of the challenges here is look, we, we shot this as one big movie. We shot it, you know, in blocks and, and, you know, within the course of an episode, we're constantly jumping back and forth in time. Um, you know, the, the, the writing is very strong and very specific, obviously. And, 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 and I think that, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, there's nobody, I, I feel like, um, like David and George, who can sort of examine a system and, 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 and take a look at the system and how the system affects the individual. So I think that those things really were, you know, very built in and, 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 and Ray, you, you, you know, again, I, I, I think for me personally, like I can't speak for the other actors. For me, you know, when you play a character that everyone says, this guy would walk in a room and everyone would take notice. He, some people would call him the most arrogant person they ever saw. Some people loved him. Some people hated him. But they said he was just a larger than life human being. And when, when you're doing that, you, you know, especially when you're shooting it, you, you know, you're shooting something in, in, in the real place where it went down and you're using a lot of non-actors. You know, for me, I really wanted to kind of swing for the fences here. I, I wanted this guy to be larger than life. And so for me to do this, um, you know, by far the most important thing was is that I was doing it with with with, with Ray and, and that, that I'm doing it with, you know, a filmmaker that I believe in with every fiber of my body, but also I just, I just trust him as a human being. So there were times I was like, Hey man, you know, is this like, <laughs> is this too much? Cause a, a lot of times, you know, again, you're, you're, you're working with people who've never been on camera before. And, and um, you know, Ray, he, you really got to trust your director and, and, and going in, you know, after our experience in King Richard and just knowing him so well, one of the greatest filmmakers alive. Like I, I just, I trust him implicitly. So, I think a big thing about that, you, you know, it's the best way to work. And it's so rare for an actor that you can actually say, all right, I'm going to give myself over. And so much of the sort of monitoring and, and, and um, uh, uh, the dialing up and down of where he is in his journey. And, 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 and it's really a matter of really confidence. He comes in as a rookie and, and in, in patrol and, you know, he's, he's brand new, but, you know, all the stages along the way, I really felt that, that, that Ray had such a beautiful and elegant hand in, in, in tempering that. And, um, you know, that, that's really, um, you, you got to trust and there's no way this, that, you know, there's no way it, it works without, without Ray. 
Well, I got to throw it back to John because he doesn't get enough uh, credit for for the the work that he does, you know. And and I think the deep dive that John gave to this performance is so evident. Um, you know, the ride alongs, uh, you know, east, north, south, west, all over Baltimore. Uh, the amount of work that he put in, um, you know, in, in getting to know police officers, getting to know people that knew Wayne, um, that knew him intimately in speaking to Wayne. I, I was scared to talk to Wayne. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to call Wayne or want Wayne to have my number. I don't want to know. <laughs> like, I don't know if I want him to see the show. <laughs> you know, but John's like putting himself out there in a way that like no, no one else, uh, hands down, doesn't and, and and you know bigger bigger like the John's range as an actor is so tremendous and and for me to to watch your player so to speak if you, if, I, if I was a coach to watch your player like be able to hit all of those octaves to be able to go that distance is amazing and 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 to trust that and to have that ability to go there um, and to play it's it's so much fun. To, to be on the field and watch someone. And there were so many times where John would come in with, with ideas, things that he had learned, anecdotes from, from his own research that found their way into the script. Our style is very improvisational and that's tough to do with very specific writers, right? So, you, you know, we have to kind of ask for forgiveness, you know, a little bit, you know, it's, 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 it's play and, and, and look, look, George, I'm, I promise, like, don't worry, it's, it's going to work out. Like, it, it's all good. And I think there was just sort of building trust with them. And it was a little, you know, showing the elasticity of, of that relationship. Like, look, we're going to, we're going to do what we know works because we did that in King Richard. We're going to play here and, and play with these words because they're only going to make your words stronger. And I think that that's how we really built this this thing together. I mean, again, you know, I you can't take credit for for David and George's genius. That these guys are are remarkable. Uh, their their level of specificity is second to none. I mean, we're talking about like court reports on the table that no one sees have to be accurate. Um, you know, the the detail of of what the courtrooms look like and and you, like details that no one else on planet Earth would be paying attention to, but are so important in the in the understanding uh, for our characters and 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 for the show. And and so to to have that combination, I think was was dynamite. It was amazing for me as as a director to to work with with people that cared that much. And and John just deserves so much credit for that because he was really a captain on, on, the, on, on the field in, in a lot of ways. He took on that role, not only as an actor, but on set. And, and I think, you know, John fosters that level of, of respect. When you walk on set with John, with John Bernthal, all the other actors have to, you know, oh, look, I was out three nights this week. How many nights were you out? And I think just like that level of like, dog, you better show up. Otherwise, like, what, what, you know, I think that 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 definitely creates an environment of I'm putting in the time I'm putting in um, that level of, uh, of work. And it, it's 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 amazing to see. It's amazing to work with for sure. I mean, I, I love all of those detailings and in terms of, of the authenticity as well, you know, I know that you went to a lot of the same locations, a lot of the same street corners, a lot of the exteriors of buildings or the same buildings where a lot of these moments in the story happened. Um, and wanted to ask you in particular about filming the scenes where you're recreating some of the Freddie Gray protests, um, you know, because that you went to the same street corner where that protest happened. And even to the point where, you know, with all of your background actors who were there, you know, when you were filming the scene that there was someone who really thought that there was a protest happening and was fairly antagonized by John in character. And so I was just interested in, you know, how you approach that scene in trying to capture that authenticity, capture that real energy and emotion that was in Baltimore at that particular time, um, you know, but also with the resources that you had of you only had so many actors and, and a finite amount of people and space that you could utilize on camera. Yeah, look, it was it was a heavy day, I would say, for for everyone. I think, um, you know, anytime you're 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 creating real life events and and especially ones that, that were there's still open wounds, especially in the city of Baltimore. Um, it's tricky. But I, but I think, look, I, I think it shows the power and resilience of the people of the city. 
Um, you know, it was why the, 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 the protests were widely covered. So we definitely had a lot of footage of, of where it took place. And, um, and, and I think for, 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 you know, for us, it was rooting it in a, in a point of view. And so, you know, having Wayne, um, be our, our central point of view for that construction of the scene, you know, Wayne commandeers a van, he's, he's at headquarters and then he, you know, he, 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 he shows up and he's very heroic and pulling his men behind the line and and then in joining the line and so you know there was a there was a narrative to to the coverage it wasn't just like let's let's just cover you know the the protests it was really it was really John's moment in, in a lot of ways uh, to show that you know he was he was this guy who was willing to, to be there on the front lines uh, for, for for those uh, you know for for his for his unit. And, and then, of course, you know, delivering chicken boxes at night like he was that guy, you know, he was that guy. And so we we constructed the scene through um, through John's point of view and uh, through, through Wayne's point of view, I should say. And and that gave the whole that gave the whole section some structure. Um, look, I, a lot testament to, to the to the folks of Baltimore that came out that day, uh, how, however many extra so many people were actually in real protests that actually came came back for that day and um, a lot, even some police officers who were there uh, on the day. So we had real folks mixed in, you know, re real people that could help us orchestrate. This is, oh, no, no, we weren't here. This is how we would do it. Actually, we were cleaning up. Uh, there were so many anecdotes that came out from hiring real people because they they knew, no, the line was here or we could be here and, and they could help, you know, really, you know, help us orchestrate it in a way that felt real, grounded, authentic. But look, it was an overcast day. It was like you couldn't have asked for better weather on that day. It, it, it was gloomy. It was dark. It was heavy. And you could feel that. You could feel that when making um, when making it. And uh, yeah, it was. Look, it was. It, I, I think it turned out spectacular, and, and I'm really happy with the way it it, it turned out in the in, in the story. But but hopefully in a, in a way that 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 gave people justice. What what actually happened on the day, um, what it looked like, um, what it felt like, and, and and brought people to the front lines of of, of what it what it's like um, when when the city you know when the city erupts. Um, Anyway, maybe John could speak to, to his experience after getting punched in the face and having to go, having to go back, having to go back to work, you know, five minutes later. <laughs> he blocked it, though. He, 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 he blocked it with a shield. So <laughs> thank God I was <laughs> he's safe. <laughs> no, I, 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 but, you know, just to echo what Ray said, I, 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 um, I really I feel like we can hold our head high in, 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 in just sort of the, the way that. Uh, you know, look, this, this, this is this subject, you know, the GTTF and, 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 and just police corruption and, and, and um, policing in Baltimore, it's, it's, it's extraordinarily raw and sensitive there. And I, and I feel like the entire time we really held uh, the city of Baltimore, we, we made this show with the city of Baltimore and for the city of Baltimore and by the city of Baltimore. And I feel like there was always this, um, appreciation and reverence and respect in the way that we made it and really the producers just deserve uh so much respect for that I, I i've never really been on a set that um was so respectful um and i i, I think that this crew this baltimore-based crew that comes from the wire they have deep roots in that city and i think because the residents of the wire in this city um you know we're really um a, a lot of this respect is is earned and and i'm just i think for Ray and I, we were just so grateful to be a part of that and be welcomed into that family. But I think on that day in particular, even the guy who, you know, came in and, and took the swing at me, you know, you know, I, I, you know, he and I ended up hugging afterwards after he, you know, continued being pursued by, by the real police. You know, I, 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 I think at the end of those days, you know, after, after each take, you, you, you had all these folks from that neighborhood who were really part of the uprising and then I was standing on a line with mostly real police officers. And after each takes, we, we were all hugging each other. It was highly emotional. Um, it was highly sensitive. And, um, and I think we treated it the right way. That was always paramount, taking care of people, listening to people. And real credit to the filmmaking and to the producers. You know, the, w w when you have somebody there who actually experienced what you're trying to portray, there's no... That's sacred. That's sacred that they're, that they're there. And it's sacred if they're willing to share with you. And, 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 and I think that we always held it sacred. And I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy about that. 
But there's no better honor that you can pay that person than listening to what they say and then actually shooting it the way that they say that it went down. And, and, and I feel like so often that was sort of uh, the, mo the, the, the bar that we were trying to hit. We, if somebody knew a factual element, if somebody had a perspective that was real and, and, and came from that day, we really did try to try to honor it in some way. And um, I, I, I love I love working that way. And, and, and I'm really appreciative uh, of the way that that, that, that we approach that. I mean, the level of detailing throughout the entire series is, is so remarkable. And, and in a different space of, of details, John, I wanted to talk to you about finding, finding the voice of Wayne in, in quite a literal sense, because the way in which you're speaking throughout the series, there's kind of this real ferocious energy to the delivery. It's someone who just kind of has to get all of the words out very fast, very quick. And even the volume at which you're talking always feels like it's a little bit louder than everybody else around. And so it's interested in, in the the path and the process to finding his very specific voice and delivery and energy as a character in that way. Sure. Uh, thanks. I mean, look, I, I, I work with a, a great dialect coach. Uh, I, I really look at, again, when, when your North star is, 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 is telling the truth, you, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get that right. You know, he's, he's from middle river, Maryland. It's a very, very specific dialect. And then getting the, the tone and timber of, of, of Wayne's voice, you know, we have, not just from talking to him or talking uh, about him with folks, we, we've got countless hours of body cam footage. Um, so, 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 so like you said, um, he comes in and you hear him immediately. Uh, another thing that we really wanted to explore with Wayne was the fact that he's a, a, a code switcher. He talks one way with white folks, one way with black folks, one way with cops, one way, one way with folks from Middle River. Um, he changes it up all the time, one way with his wife. We really wanted to hit that. But, you know, again, I mean, I, I, I hate going back to the same, you, you know, sort of answer, but, you know, Ray and I had just come from King Richard, uh, you know, the character that I played in that also had a, uh, a very specific uh, dialect and, 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 and way, way of speaking um, that we really wanted to get right. And the entire time I was just making voice notes, hitting Ray up, saying, what do you think about this? And all along the way, we were just sort of checking in with him. And again, if you have a partner and a, a, a filmmaker that you trust in like that, he, he, I, I, Ray's taste is impeccable. Like he, if, if he casts somebody, it's the right person. Even, you know, maybe he made a couple mistakes with me, but every, if you look across the board of his ability to cast, it's impeccable. His taste is impeccable. The shots that he picks, his editing. It's so I, I, I just, Knowing that, look, it was, uh, I was really worried. Uh, you know, they, they scheduled the, that, that, that big monologue. That was our very first day of shooting. So, uh, you know, that was like seven page monologue. So the voice and, and, and the accent was going to really fail hard and quickly, or it was going to work. And, and I really didn't know, but again, um, I'm, I'm pretty hard on myself, but, 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 but having, having Ray there and saying, Hey, Hey, this is working, man. Keep this going. It's, 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 it's all I need. And, and lastly, Ray, I want to talk a little bit about the way in which you're framing each of the characters um, in slightly different ways. You know, when you were talking about the, the Freddie Gray scene earlier, obviously that's bringing us into the center of everything with Wayne, you know, but he's not present on camera the whole time. And it feels like there's a slightly different energy and movement to the camera with Win Me, but also you just bring the camera so close to these characters and, and give us such intimacy with them. And so I was interested in how you kind of looked individually at each of the characters within this piece and, and how you want the camera to bring us into each of their individual worlds throughout the story. Yeah, look, I th I think you know the the scripts were 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 pretty tight, and and obviously every episode starts with a new member of the GTTF, um, you know, a, in an interrogation room um, and a proffer session, and uh, and then we go through flashbacks in order to uh, in order to frame you know to frame that, and so uh, we would use that. Uh, as an entryway into a particular character, whether it was Danny Herschel or, you know, or Daryl Britt Gibson uh, as Ramel, uh, as Ramel. Um, and so, you know, we often would try to, whoever was speaking or whoever was telling their story, try to root that scene um, in that particular protagonist. Obviously, if it was multiple protagonists, it was still their memory of that particular moment. So if Ram was telling the story, even if, 
you know, Gondo was there, it was really about how Ram was telling that story. And so that became the way to really structure each scene through each protagonist that we that we had. Um, obviously, not a tremendous amount of real estate. It's a true ensemble in that way. Um, but to try to give everyone some level of definition with the amount of screen time that they had. Um, obviously, in introducing the characters, try to make it um, fresh and interesting and in a, in a way to, to, to really draw you in. Um, and look, you know, we try, again, I think John said it at the, at the beginning, we tried to shoot it like a, a six hour movie. And so we had time, you know, we, we had time to develop some, some of the characters to, to a certain degree and, 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 and not have to, you know, have everybody in such close up immediately. Okay. Let's, let's take our time and, 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 and choose wisely, you know, when we want to be close and, um, especially with Suter and, and his storyline and how that develops and just try to be a little bit more uh, methodical and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and yeah, specific about the shots that we kind of chose uh, in Taurus to, to do that. But yeah, kudos, hats off to, to my, to my partner in crime, uh, Euron Orbeck. I think he shot a beautiful show. Uh, uh, Valeria, you know, great production design, but we also had amazing hair and makeup, you know, Donna, Donna, uh, uh, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie Young, um, Donna Gibson on, 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 on wardrobe. I mean, they've been with David and George, what, 25, 30 years. I mean, uh, amazing, uh, amazing crew that we work with to really tell this story. We, we don't do this, these things alone. Um, I had to count on so many people to track. I mean, there were, there were some days where we were shooting all, we were shooting every timeline and every, uh, you know, Three, three or three or four different timelines and six different episodes in one in one day. Um, you know, my brain, as much as I think I could hold a lot of information, uh, I'm counting on a lot on a lot of people. Our AD Maggie Murphy to really keep us on track. Um, so many people in the, in the filmmaking process to really help us um, and guide and make sure. And, and and I think the 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 person that doesn't get enough credit out of all of us is is Nina Noble. Um, you know, you see her name going back to the, going back to the corner and, and, and it is just such a powerful name. <laughs> she is like, you know, the whisperer in every department, um, making sure that the cast and crew are, are representative of the people of Baltimore, making sure that, you know, on our off days that John and, and Daryl and Wumi are going to speak at, you know, Baltimore school of the arts like it, it goes beyond the filmmaking process this is such a such a labor of love and it's such a um it's such a uh you know it's something that i think they it, it's not just tv they really take it to the extreme when it comes to trying to honor and respect what happened there and i think you can feel that in in, in every fabric of, of of the filmmaking process um and for me as a, as a filmmaker just popping in it, it feels like amazing to 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 go into a world um with people that care that deeply i, I always feel like i care the most but then you meet other people and they're like man they they care even more like i gotta care i, I gotta dig even deeper than i thought i had to and so to to walk into that type of environment it, it just makes you want to do your best and 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 get the best out of the people that you're working with. So, um, kudos kudos to to David George Nina for for building a, a brilliant show for sure. I mean, it's it's such an incredibly cinematic way that you've managed to film and tell this story, and your performance, John, is really really astounding to watch. And I love the care that you've both taken and how you told this entire story throughout the series. So, thank you so much for taking time and talking about it. Really appreciate it. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having us.